And we're back with our guests, uh, Dr. Philip Bryant and Danielle from Columbus State University. Welcome to the program. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Well, uh, Dr. Phil, I, I was at Columbus State University looking for something else and bumped into you in the hallway, and you had such a <laughs> bubbling personality. I said, this is an interesting guy. And when I found out what you were involved with, I thought this would be an interesting subject for people to, to learn about. But uh, before we get started about what all you do, I'd like for you all to give us a little get acquainted info about how you got here right now. And you start, Dr. Phil. All right. So as you mentioned, um, I'm teaching a course called uh, Contemporary Issues in Servant Leadership. It's part of our MSOL program, Masters of Science and Organizational Leadership. And people can get a, a, a concentration in HR or servant leadership. Um, I came to Columbus State in 2010, but I was actually first introduced to servant leadership in 2000. Mm -hmm. um, I started working for Service Master. And on the application, they asked, what does servant leadership mean to you? It's the first time I'd seen the question. So I said, well, to me, it means do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Uh, other people have said it, it means, you know, do the right thing on the application. But that was, uh, and also I had been um, reading Blanchard. I was familiar with Blanchard's books and Turner's books, but um, I wasn't sure what servant leadership was. Uh, fast forward 10 years, uh, Columbus State had this opportunity to be a professor of servant leadership. Mm -hmm. I had a, a, a PhD in, in business management concentration leadership so um, and I had been working at service master so I said oh, well let's let's go do that um, and that is how I came to be here uh, the journal servant leadership theory and practice started two and a half years ago okay and Danielle how'd you get here to this station um, in life? well I grew up in this area um, went to Columbus State to do a bachelor's degree in human resource management um, at Columbus State uh, there's a lot of concentration on servant leadership and so that's where I heard about servant leadership and kind of had an idea of what it was. Um, found out about the master's program that we have. It's a master of organizational leadership, but um, as Dr. Phil mentioned, you can do a focus on servant leadership, uh, which is the program I'm in now. Um, and uh, through the undergrad program and my involvement with uh, SHRM, the Society for Human Resource Management, um, I kind of got to know Dr. Phil. and. Um, he was looking for a new graduate assistant. His uh, last one was graduating. Mm -hmm. um, funny how we do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so he was looking for you know, a new assistant, um, told me about the journal. And so that's why when I came back to, to do my degree, I started in, uh, working with him on, on the journal for mm -hmm. Servant Leadership Theory and Practice. OK. Uh, we're talking with Dr. Philip Bryant. He's with uh, CSU and Danielle, a graduate student. I'd like for both of you, uh, you first, Danielle, and then we'll get the real, real uh, positive definition, because yours might be abbreviated. Give us a definition <laughs> of servant leadership. What does that mean in lay terms for people out there? Sure. Um, the thing about servant leadership is there are so many definitions, but I will give an abbreviated one. Um, basically, servant leadership is meeting the needs of your followers so that they are able to meet the needs of the organization. Mm -hmm. um, and the idea is that if you meet, if you meet their needs, um, beyond just you know task focused and getting the job done meet the real needs that the person has that um, they would develop a, a more motivation to serve the organization and then kind of a more commitment to yeah that sounds like an A student there Dr. Phil. Yes it does <laughs> and, and you and I spoke the other day yes, and, and the definition she gave is almost exactly what I, I gave you um, I would say there's some good descriptions uh, Robert Greenleaf uh, coined the phrase uh, mm -hmm. servant leadership in 1970 he has a really good description in his uh, essay, The, the servant, servant as Leader. leader. The servant as Leader. Uh, a good definition is by a guy named Jim Laub, 1999, okay. L-A-U-B, Laub. Um, but it's kind of long, but it's really good as a definition. Uh, I would say that it is when the leader is focused on meeting the goals and the needs of his people, but at the same time not missing out on the goals and needs of the organization. Yeah, okay, very good. Well, so Danielle, at what juncture in your study uh, of this particular course did the light go off and say, well, I just love this and I want to be involved with it? Well, um, it was probably, it, it's a combination of working with the journal and the classes that I was taking. Um, the good thing about this program is that we have a lot of relational classes, um, things like uh, negotiations is an entire class and then servant leadership is an entire class um, so I'm getting to do all of these classes that really go into depth um, so last semester is when I had the foundations of servant leadership class um, 
and then also at the beginning of last semester is when I started to work with the journal. So um, I don't know that there was a light bulb moment, but over over the time of you know gaining an understanding of it, just at every step of the way, I just you know I just love the concept of servant leadership, and it's great because it doesn't you don't have to balance you know are you going to are you going to be fair and do the right thing and all this or try to get ahead? It's the idea of you know what we can all succeed through servant leadership. Okay. My guests right now is Dr. Philip Bryant and Danielle. She's a graduate student out there at CSU. We're going to take a short break and we'll come back and talk with <laughs> Dr. Phil and Danielle about showing us some Americans, some great Americans who are actually living this principle of servant leadership and how you can find some people in the community that might be actually doing that. That's going to come up next. And welcome back to Public Agenda. I'm Edgar Champagne sitting in for State Senator Ed Harbison in Atlanta. Again, we do have a clip from the Senator we'll be playing in the program later on. Uh, my guest right now is uh, Danielle Van. She's a graduate student and Dr. Philip Bryant from CSU in the Servant Leadership Program. Dr. Phil, I asked uh, Danielle about a light bulb moment and was there a point in your study or in your as a younger person when it something said well I just love this I got to be involved with it right so I would say that I didn't have a, a light bulb moment that said I love it because I, I've loved it ever since I've been in it but um, there was a light bulb moment when I f think I finally understood it mm -hmm. and I think that honestly I've learned two things about servant leadership and it's very similar to mentoring uh, one is that if you if you really want to mentor your people and, and help them develop which is part of servant leadership help them develop you've got to love them You've got to love them, and you've got to invest in them. And that word invest, you know, invest time, invest energy. We do. We spend time, spend energy. And over time, uh, it, does, it does become tiring. So lesson number two I've learned, and I've learned actually, I have a, I have a, um, a publication coming out in, it's called the Connect Magazine. Mm -hmm. uh, the International Mentoring Association is publishing it this month. And it's about seven lessons I've learned in servant, what I call servant mentoring. Mm -hmm. Because I've learned that servant leadership is very similar to mentoring. But one of the, so one lesson was if you love your people, if you love your employees, they might just love you back. The other though goes to that spending and investing in others. I've learned that 110 is not sustainable. Mm -hmm. So I have a car. 110 percent you mean? 110 is yeah, not yeah. sustainable. If I were to drive my car um, 110, I could do that for a few minutes. But if I drove, drove my car 110 for a few hours, that's something would probably burn up. And that happens with people. So um, servant leadership is, is fun for the leader. It's good for the followers. It's also good for the leader. In fact, our, our, our journal is um, it, publishing an article this month again about how the servant leader gets benefits too. Mm -hmm. um, but also you need to take time for yourself. It's not selflessness. Uh, you have to take time for yourself to, to just back off. Um, even Jesus had to go off on a boat by himself <laughs> sometimes yeah. and get away from them. Yeah, yeah. So now let me see if I understand this correct. Servant leadership, there's the, the CEO or the boss, more or less, and then there are his assistants and the people who are working. There's a company, and the servant, he's serving the company and the people by bringing everybody along, having a good attitude so that there's, everybody enjoys what they do and they kind of love it. Is that kind of, sort of? Um, and the reason why they do that is because they, he, he or she authentically has shown that he cares about their development, their goals, their future. <clears throat> Who would be a CEO or a company that we would say that is actually personifying and living that life of servant leadership? Can you think of anybody off the top? It could be nationally or locally. That, that really, that, that, that is a tough question. There, there are lists mm -hmm. uh, that say there's some, some servant leadership companies. I know that Aflac um, makes that list often. Um, Starbucks and also, okay. uh, in fact, Schultz, Howard Schultz, has written a, a brief essay this year about how what he said is this world needs, what, the, what America needs is more servant leaders. Mm -hmm. And I think he said that in a political context, that, uh, that hopefully a servant leader will emerge from the candidates. Okay, just got a couple of minutes left. Uh, Danielle, uh, I was do doing an interview with uh, Dr. Phil before we decided to do this program. He was telling me that you help write the journal, firstly, but you were saying that you all are getting published by the Mentors Association or, or National Mentors. Tell us about that real quick. Well, um, I help edit the journal, mm -hmm. um, but as far as the other publications, um, he mentioned the um, 
International Mentoring In Association. International Mentoring Association. Um, we went to a conference this past year and uh, brought the journal there, talked about servant leadership and kind of spread the word. So that was a lot of fun. Um, and they invited us to submit to their publications. So, um, you know, a part of what we do with the journal is trying to get the word out about servant leadership and just kind of... Um, spread spread the, the servant leadership yeah. love, I guess. Right. So, Dr. <laughs> Phil, at CSU, if a person wants to come and study you, I mean, because your, your personality just oozes out and everything. You're a great-looking guy, and you've got the energy. Uh, how do they, you know, kind of get involved, and how can they come and do an interview to see if they would like to continue in this subject, in this field? Okay. Well, the, we are in the School of Business, the College of Business, Turner College of Business. The great thing is you don't have to have a business degree, right, to, to, to be part of the program. Um, okay. But I mean, the name I would give you would be Kate Hargrove. Mm -hmm. She, Kate Hargrove, is our recruiter for graduate studies. Okay. And she recruits not only for the MSOL, but also for the MBA. And they're, they're, little, they're different programs for different uh, interests. The MBA is a little bit more quantitative, and the MSOL is a little bit more relational. Mm -hmm. um, but we include both in both programs. So at the end of the program, you're going to have a speaker series. Uh, is that going to be open to the public, or is basically for CSU students? I thank you for bringing that up. Actually, actually tonight, um, a, a Dorothy Chariot, mm -hmm. who is a, a science teacher and a running coach at Brookstone, um, is coming tonight at the Turner College of Business in the Turner College of Business Auditorium on the second floor. Mm -hmm. It is open to the public. Mm -hmm. We do have room. We've, we've had as few as 11 people and, and, as, and as many as 50 people come uh, to these. Uh, the room can fit about 100, so we look forward. She's going to be speaking on uh, coaching the athlete, the student athlete, from a servant leader perspective. Wow. Who, who are some of the other people and what days? Right, right. Well, we've had, in the past, we've had Kelvin Red. Yeah. We've had Joe Arucci, who is the former CEO of the Greenleaf Center. Mm -hmm. In the future, we'll be having Ron King. Mm -hmm. We'll be having, who else? Chris Wiggins. And Chris Markwood, our president, is going to be talking about the role of servant leadership at CSU and the role of CSU in servant leadership. Beautiful. I'd like to thank you all for being my guest today, and uh, we'll get you back some other time, maybe in the later in spring, okay? That would be fun. Thank you. That's going to do it for this session of uh, Public Agenda, ladies and gentlemen.